This is Nancy Reagan. They packed five years on the sentence for life. We don't hear much about civil servants anymore. They're all postal workers are civil servants. If King was alive and present today, I believe that he would be there to support us as he supported labor. This is a, a great concern. As I said, it's not. It's a nationwide concern with letter carriers across the country making late mail deliveries in the dark. Frustrated? Do you want closure? What's yes, I am very frustrated and I would like closure on it and whoever did or whoever didn't know anything to come forward and let everybody know what's going on and what really happened. It's the housing unit y'all be going into. We want safe delivery! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? I'd like to say a few words here about uh, why we're here, about the safety uh, being diminished in the Postal Service. Evaluations. They've made the routes way too long. Number two is not allowing carriers in on their days off. Number three, we don't have enough employees. We're losing people faster than what they're hiring them. So who wants this kind of a job? Postal Service has a reputation for being a good middle class job, and it's not anymore. Plant consolidation. They closed Frederick down two years ago, and then this past year they've closed Cumberland Mail Sorting Facility down in Martinsburg, West Virginia, and all of these have been consolidated into the Baltimore plant. The mail gets stacked up there. They sort the, uh, the mail for Cumberland first because it's 136 miles from Cumberland down to Baltimore and 136 miles back. 272 miles to, for the mail to travel. So because of the time frame of getting that mail out there where their carriers can deliver at, at a reasonable amount of time, Baltimore mail gets sorted last. So there are more than one day where Baltimore Mail doesn't get out to the stations till 11 o'clock, noon, an extreme example, one in the afternoon before the carriers get the mail, before they even go out on the routes. And of course, if you're starting your route three hours late, you're three hours extra on the end of getting back in. The post office here recently put out a bulletin saying that the number of carriers out there after dark is going from 20 percent up to 40 percent. That's a hundred percent increase of the carriers that are reporting that they're out there after dark. And who's responsible for all this? It was ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, along with the Koch brothers. This is all an effort to privatize the post office. When private companies take this over, their only goal is to increase profits. So we've seen rates overseas double and even triple. What happens when you privatize the Postal Service? You decrease service and increase the cost. It's so unfortunate that we had to lose um, a life for changes to happen, but things have changed and, and I only can speak for Landover and talking to some other couriers. They're still out there working um, late at night and so we still have a lot of work to do. Yes. And not just only the couriers working in, in the dark, but we still need to find out who did this to yeah. Mr. Barnett. Yeah. Because a lot of couriers are scared, especially right. not having no answers. That's and that's right. very important. We, I've been courier mail for 20 years, and I would never think in a million years that something like this would happen to a public uh, worker, like a letter courier. A lot of us are jumping and watching our back couriers coming to me saying, well, Nance, I, I'm not going to do that because I'm scared. I'm scared. So I think more needs to be done um, as far as our routes being real long because sometimes we don't have no choice but to be out there at night because our routes are so long. Right. Our routes are so long. So it's not just land over that was affected. This is the whole nation. This is not just about being down here on MLK, ML, MLK Day. And, and forgive me because I'm, I tell you, I've talked to the family today. I've talked to my family. This is a horrendous thing. Uh, CCAs are career carrier associates that they are now hiring to come in and try to absorb some of the work that the letter carriers are doing so they won't have to be out here so long at night. Uh, I, I have understood because I am a trainer and I found out that in the Washington DC area we are now hiring in excess of 300. Is that enough? No. no. Why? Because even though they hire that many, that don't mean that all of them will stay here. We need more. We need a lot more. We need them all over the country because carriers are going to get the opportunity now to go out and enjoy dinner with their family because they're working so late at night. They're being mandated to work six days a week, 10, 12 hours a day. Is that fair? No. no. Should we have to do this? No. no. We want to make this safe for everybody. 
I found out through letter carrying, talking to Karen like the rest of the carriers, carriers want to know what can we do. I've seen carriers put on headlamps. I've seen carriers put on lights. I've seen carriers rearrange their routes so that they don't be in the bad part or the dark part at night. The fact is they should not have to be making those decisions on their own. That's right. They should be able to have management adjust these routes, get enough people out here to carry these routes so they don't have to be out in the dark. You're doing it because management is making you doing it, and there's a threat that if you don't do it, it may be your job. That's right. Okay? Nobody should have to live under those circumstances. All we got to do is be persistent with management and the people that hold the, the cars that we deal. Yeah, I'm Johnny Stevens. I'm with um, from New York City. Um, I'm with the Chelsea um, Coalition on Housing. And we're here to pay solidarity to the postal workers and letter carriers. So they shouldn't be forced to work in the dark or to work after hours or to work 10 and 12 hours for a multinational corporation for data hole or to get privatized. I work with a housing association and we get medical, we get our medicine through the mail. Mm -hmm. We get our letters to our loved one through the mail, our important school document to the, to the mail. We see mail carriers talk to our seniors and to our neighbors. And if something happened and when our kids get in trouble or get missing or can't find their way home, we see the mail carriers being a part and consulting with the different families in the neighborhood. What forced this situation for mail workers to be out so late is the closing of the so many processing plants. Yes. It's a $5.5 billion accountability act that they had stolen from the postal workers. And we thank you for coming out. And this is a very important day to send the word, the word throughout the world that we're going to fight for our service and we're going to fight for our postal job. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, I'm glad to see everybody came out tonight uh, again in solidarity. I didn't know Mr. Barnett, but uh, he was a carrier, so he was one of my brothers. So when when he went down, we felt that in Rockville as well. We're going through the same things, being mandated to come in six, seven day, six or seven days a week. We're working long hours as well. When you're out there in the dock, it, with all the other things we have to deal with, whether it's 100 degrees, whether it's five degrees on that Tuesday where we just went through, and we, the last last thing we need to be worried about is watching our back because we're delivering in the dock and we're being pressed and pounded by management to get back in unreasonable times because our routes are overburdened. I wanted to go back to 20 years ago when I came in when we started at 5.30 and 6 o'clock in the morning and we had our mail ready. We were on the street at 8.30, 9 o'clock and we were going home to our loved ones at 5, 5.30. That's what I would like to see happen. Open back up these plants that you're shutting down for no reason reason at all saying we broke when the brother just said we made over 600 million dollar profit yeah. and open those plants back up get those clerks back in there at one two o'clock in the morning get us our mail at four or five o'clock in the morning to keep screaming it we have to keep yelling at manager and don't give up the fight a moment of silence a word of prayer before we leave for Tyson Barnett and his family we thank them for coming out and supporting it because the one thing that we're looking for today is a clear message Safety first. You preach it on the workroom floor, so represent what you preach. Represent what you say. If you really believe that safety is paramount, then put it to action. We want our letter carriers to work in a very safe environment. So with that, could we have a word of prayer, and then we want to have a moment of silence for Tyson Barnett. So let us pray. Okay. Heavenly Father, we do come before you. Lord, we come thanking you for this wonderful day, that we can come out and not only celebrate Martin Luther King's birthday and what he represent. Certainly he was a tremendous friend of labor, the labor movement, as he was a great civil rights activist. He would have been here to support this mission today, to see that we could put an end to letter carriers working in the dark. So, Father, we do come. We thank the Barnett family for traveling over the highways and the byways. We pray, Father God, that you give them safe travel home. But most importantly, Father, we ask that you grant them peace. We ask that you give them understanding. We ask, Lord God, that you would just be with them, that you would comfort them in the loss of their son, their, their brother, their cousin, that you just be with them, Lord God. Give them understanding, Lord. And most of all, Father, we pray that his life will not be in vain.
We thank the Postal Service here in the Capital District. They have taken the initiative to make some changes, but this is not a Washington, D.C. issue. It's not a Cap Metro issue. This is a nationwide issue. And if they can do it here, they can do it in other parts of the country. Atlanta, Chicago, Boston, they can do it everywhere. So let, let this not just rest here in Washington, D.C., but let it move and permeate throughout this country. So, Father, we do thank you. We praise you. As we go forth, Lord, we ask that you would be with us. And most importantly, please be with the Barnett family and all they, that they do and they go through in the next couple of days and years to come. So with that, we would like to have a moment of silence, please. This is our message to Postmaster General Pat Donahoe. Postmaster General Patrick R. Donahoe, U.S. Postal Service Headquarters, Lafayette Plaza. Greetings, Mr. Donahoe. On behalf of postal workers and communities across America, we call on you to do to end delivery in the dark. Start letter carriers early. Fully staff sorting clerks and letter carrier positions. Adjust overburdened routes and reopen mail processing plants. Sincerely, Community and Postal Workers United. The tragedy that we've seen letter carriers and their families have to go through because of the just unbelievable destruction of the Postal Service, the attempt to privatize the Postal Service, to break it apart for the, private of a, for the profit of a few corporations is unbelievable. It's completely disgusting and it must be stopped now. You know, they keep wanting to say that there's something broken with the Postal Service Service. But from our perspective, the only thing broken with the Postal Service is the Postmaster General yeah. and the U.S. Congress. And we need Congress and the President and everyone to know that the postal workers aren't sitting down, the letter carriers aren't sitting down, they're fighting back. I'm Eugene from the Answer Coalition. I'm proud to be here with you. I'm proud to stand here with you. And we'll be with you all the way through. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Eugene. Are we ready? Yes. Okay. What do we want? Safety. Yes. When do we want it? Now. now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? City brought a group Yay! down. Yeah. People from Baltimore. Yay! I see there they are. Lee Patterson from Baltimore. Yay! Glad y'all made it. Yeah. We have Joe Piet from Philadelphia. Yay! Yay! Now, if, post, if the Postal Service wants to have most of their carriers back on the street, uh, back in the office rather, while it's still light out. You gotta open up these plants that you will advise it'll yeah. 174 plants! You're sending mail hundreds of miles away from where it has to be delivered! Woo. Two or three hundred mile round trips for mail to be delivered! That's a big reason! That's a big reason why carriers are out here after dark! Because you when you have to send the mail that far away, you can't get it back to the stations in time. I got a message here for you letter carriers out there. 
Your boss makes you do anything unsafe. That's right. Jim. Don't tell him you can't deliver in the dark. Tell him it's unsafe. And fill out a safety form. That's a 1767. 1767 is your friend. Fill him out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Safety. When do we want it? Now. Yeah. So we do thank the post office for uh, covering the cost of his um, services. And we thank all of the mail carriers for all of your support. It has meant so much. And um, we uh, hope and pray that you get the changes and the results that you're looking for so that you can continue to do the job that you love doing in a safe manner.